Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 29 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in Season 2. If you guys did miss the previous one at Monaco, then be sure to go check that one out. Before you see this one, we had a special one-off livery for the Monaco GP, where we had a Sprite Zero Sugar version of the current livery we have for this season, and it paid big, big dividends, because if you watch that episode, it was an amazing one for our team, an amazing one for Daniel Ricciardo, our teammate back on the top step of the podium in Formula 1 in his return to Formula 1 finally and of course it was at Monaco one of his favourite places on the calendar and it was a 1-2 for the team, it was a bit of a sketchy 1-2, we had a little bit of a dicey time with Hamilton for the second season in a row around the Principality but we made it work, we had an incredible undercut and we're making the most of what is a pretty damn decent car right now. And I am going to try my best to keep it that way. But, you know, at some point, maybe the AI will just inevitably catch us up with that increased R&D and us on reduced. But we have made some good progress because we've got now spec three on the chassis. It was, a, I think, a $12 million investment. Pretty damn big. So a lot of money we had to spend to unlock spec three. But that will unlock the final couple of major ultimate, you know, Know, upgrades on the chassis side of things but before we focus on one of those last upgrades on weight reduction I actually wanted to focus on the braking because I felt at Monaco there was a few times where I felt like the brakes almost couldn't keep up with how quick the car was going into the corner so I think our car has gotten so quick in a straight line with the aero with the chassis weight that I think now is the time to purchase a brake update which I'm always skeptical about because for the last couple of F1 games I've always thought the brake updates sometimes make the brakes feel worse in a way because there's more pressure but just playing around with this setup hopefully will negate that but there is a definite plateau now into Canada because we've got no upgrades coming into this one thankfully for us most of the grid is following that pattern as well the worry is we're going to be quite plateaued for the next couple of episodes and probably for the rest of the season as we get to these last couple of upgrades on the chassis and we're not earning as much R&D and maybe the AI will rapidly upgrade in another bunch of updates but for now, all the grid, really steady stream. Ferrari with a tiny update, Alpine as well. But the rest of us all with the similar pace that we had at Monaco. But of course, we come to Montreal and it's a very different circuit and very different conditions. As you can see, it is very wet on Saturday here around the Canadian GP. So we've got full wet qualifying, at least in Q1. It may dry up a little bit towards Inters as we go on through the day. We've got a dry race on Sunday though forecasted so it means I've had to compromise on the setup. The wings are set up for a dry race tomorrow which is going to be a bit of a uh, difficulty in this Saturday but at the same time I assume most of the grid, the AI will be in the exact same boat of setting themselves up for the race with the default setup. So we're just gonna have to make the most of it and make the most of it we shall by just doing lap after lap as we do three consecutive laps in Q1 on the same set of wet tires, bringing down the fuel and eventually finding enough time there to go P4 and eventually end the session in P8 to get ourselves into Q2. Ricardo matches us, literally we're on the same 123.9 lap time there. So that's good to see, Ho hopefully, you know, Ricardo's win is going to be a huge amount of momentum and focus for him to, you know, perform at his best at that 96 rating he's at now with our personnel upgrades. But into Q2, as I said, things were drying up a little bit. And although others are on the full wet, as you can see by Piastri's icon on the top left, I've gone out on Inters. I'm the only car on Inters because as I left, as I was getting ready to leave the garage, my engineer actually told me audibly, I think it's time for Inters. Even though the game menu recommended for me to switch back to full wets, which was a bit odd, but I just went with it. And right now it's working out because although we're P10, the second lap I do on these intermediates, we've now really got into a groove. We've gained 1.2 seconds and we go quickest of all by a decent level to the cars around us. Uh, Carlos Sainz, though, now matching us by only one-tenth because he's gone out on Inters, and it looks like everyone is maybe getting clued into that it's now time for the intermediate. So a couple of people have already set one lap time on Inters, and by the end of the session, in the last couple of seconds, everyone's out now again. It's a full, busy track 
everyone on the green wall tyres. We're P1 at the moment in sector one. Look at this evolution. By the end of the lap, I'm down in 16th place. We've dropped 16 places in one lap because everyone finally, you know, went out and the track was getting quicker and quicker. Just like we saw, obviously, at Spa, the track evolving so much with the weather and with the rain, uh, you know, disappearing and the sun coming out and drying the circuit a little bit. We've gained nearly, nearly two seconds as we cross the line in a bid to get ourselves up from P16 and it's only P14 though. Oh, it's a howler. That's a disaster. And Ricardo's out as well. P30. What on earth's gone on there? What's gone on there? We were looking good in Q1 on the full wet tyres. Relative pace wasn't too bad. Obviously, I was loving life right there for P1 for, for quite a while in Q2, but at the death of it, everyone's improved so much more than me. I thought two seconds gained was going to be clearly into the top 10 shootout, but I had to gain a further second. I had to aim for three second improvement on that lap, actually, because we're nine tenths off. Uh, Verstappen in P1, madness. So after a 1-2 at Monaco, our team is double knocked out in Q2, P13 and 14 for tomorrow's race. We've got a lot of work to do on Sunday. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to the variant of this track back in 1978, and it was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race, and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position, edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have... Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Leclerc, Russell, Albon, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Perez, Bottas, Joe, Ricardo, the owner driver, Ocon, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Sargent, Stroll, Hamilton, and Liam Lawson. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. I don't really have any answers for what happened on Saturday there, but it is what it is. Ricardo and myself are P13 and 14, and we've both got work to do. Our car is still the second best car on the grid on paper. Okay, so you saw how quick it was around Monaco. I think maybe we just got caught out with some insane AI improvements there on the simulated times they got through to the end of that session. I thought we were good gaining two seconds, but we needed three. So we need to now hopefully, um, I hope the race pace here and dry conditions is much better. Like I said, I've set this car up for drives. Ricardo, I'm sure most of the AI did to be fair with the default setup. So our car should be theoretically much quicker in these conditions than it was uh, in the wet. Maybe a, cu a couple of these, uh, these AI cars did set up for the full, for the full wet conditions. And that means they'll be sitting ducks on the straights today around this race. All I know is we've got a lot of work to do to bounce back from P14 to anywhere near that top three in the podium that we got last time out. As we go to five red lights to the Canadian Grand Prix. It's a Red Bull 1-2 to kick things off. We're underway. Joe with a very slow getaway in the Sauber. We're on the grass trying to go around the outside of him. We get boxed in. Ricardo has actually found a much better uh, line on the inside to overtake. Joe and also Valtteri Bottas trying to overtake his fellow compatriot Piastri as we're also in a battle with a McLaren. Bottas on our outside. We need to try and squeeze him out, giving him enough room on the inside to work with, but we do manage to pick up the P12. But Ricardo stays ahead of us in the opening corners of lap one. I really thought I had him and Joe, but Joe made life very difficult for us on the grass there. As ahead, there's a ferocious fight going on between the Mercedes and the Ferraris. Meanwhile, whilst the two Red Bulls are 1 2 still. Verstappen leading Norris. Alonso in no man's land in P3 in the Aston Martin Honda. Uh, we've got Russell versus Sainz, and Sainz obviously one of the championship contenders so far this season, looking to try and get ahead. But looks like Mercedes actually have some decent pace here, annoying the heck out of uh, the two Ferrari cars. Well, I say 1 1 Mercedes car because Hamilton is down in P21 with a grid penalty. So it's just Russell really being the only silver arrow, being a nuisance to the Scuderia but he's done a good job. He's ahead of them, ahead of then Albon in P7, Gasly, Perez in P9 in the Alpha Tauri. I didn't actually mention that, but yeah, 
Perez actually out-qualified both of us, myself and Ricardo, in an Alpha Tauri uh, in that in that in that uh, uh, wet qualifying Q2. So he's in the top ten right now, ahead of Piastri. At some point, probably though, we're all going to look to try and pass him because the Alpha Tauri shouldn't have the race pace to keep ahead and he's not going to because Piastri gets down the inside on lap four to try and make the move to the outside now for the next couple of corners just before you go down the crest for the quick chicane right and left Piastri up into P9 Perez down to P10 and now it's fair game for Ricardo and myself to pick him off there goes Ricardo fakes to the right goes to the outside Perez defensive into the hairpin Ricardo swooping round the outside gets the traction that's what we like to see I love when we can actually see our teammate actually making some aggressive overtakes and he's done well there we're gonna use him actually as a bit of a teamwork effort to pull me along and get the overtake done myself on Sergio Perez to get up into P11 and so Ricardo into the points for the first time in this race and hopefully soon enough it'll be myself because Ricardo is now on the back of his fellow compatriot our old teammate so this is a little bit awkward maybe but Ricardo gets the move on the inside, gets the elbows out. Piastri cannot hang it around the outside. And that invites us to have a little look on the outside. But uh, it's not going to pay off. We're going to have to just be patient for this and wait for a better place to make a pass. And this may just be it at the hairpin. Big dive. It's not worked. It's not worked. Okay, that was uh, a bit embarrassing. We really went for it. Kind of shows, actually, we need break upgrades. If I had the break upgrades, I may have actually made that hairpin properly. But instead, we have to wait for turn one and kind of take a leaf out of Ricardo's book, really. Get some inspiration from Rick Bobby and make the exact same mood, uh, move he made on Piastri on him uh, once again. So lap 10, we're now in tandem, P9 in 10. But there's a lot of clean air ahead of Ricardo. Then you've got Gasly and then ahead, I think it's Albon versus one of the Ferraris. And I think, you know, it's been 10 laps where Ricardo has done well to be ahead of us. But now is the time to make this move and switch places and get ahead of Ricardo. Ricardo and all the while I didn't mention this at the start I probably should have but you would have noticed we're actually on the hard tires because my engineers record recommended me a hard to medium strategy and I thought okay you know what let's actually just go with the engineers faith and let's see if he's going to be correct. And right now, it's actually working out. We were slower in those first laps. There was a good reason, actually, maybe why Ricardo was able to stay ahead of us and be the one leading the charge. But now lap 11, these medium tyre runners, the soft tyre runners especially as well, are definitely feeling the tyre wear as we make an easy pounce on Gasly. Elbows out. Gasly has to dip a tyre into the grass as he tries to desperately stay ahead of us. But it's no use. Our tyre now is coming towards us. It's rubbering in and it's probably the better race tyre at this moment in time, especially versus these soft tyre runners ahead of Albon and Leclerc. But even Gasly and Ricardo on those mediums, they'll start to feel some tyre wear because I think the soft tyre runners should be in pretty soon. Lap 12 to 15 maybe, the medium tyres maybe a couple laps longer. So yeah, as we go on through the laps, we're just going to get quicker and quicker relative to everyone else because they'll they'll feel the tyre wear. We may, we may not be going particularly quick anyway on the hards, but they're going to go even slower once they start to feel the tyres wearing out. And Albon definitely is. I think we can make a move as early as maybe into Sector 2 and get that DRS then on Leclerc in the middle sector as we're going to go for the pounce on Albon. Sling it down the inside, roll the car through on the kerb. Albon gives us a real good fight on the inside to be fair and we're facing a bit of oversteer ourselves as we really push the limits of this hard tyre and this car around this circuit but we're up into P7 and we got crucially some DRS on Leclerc again whew, little little save there we really are pushing it uh, with the oversteer moments but doing well to catch them uh, with the new handling model obviously on this year's game much better you know those two moments would have been spin outs on F122 for sure and it means we can now keep up with Leclerc and make an easy dicey move on the right hand side DRS open not even too much battery needed and we're up into P6 so the comeback drive continues and at the end of lap 15 on to 16 we've finally got some pit stops but to my surprise Russell in the Mercedes is still going on 
for another lap on soft tyres. So these guys have gone 15 to 16 laps, which means if I can just get to lap 20, I could maybe pit onto softs and forget about the mediums that my engineer was recommending me as we fly past the Mercedes up into P3. Of course, people have made pit stops, so this isn't gonna where, where we are going to be once we make our pit stop, but we're doing very well just to be in some good clean air to focus on our lap times as we're up into P2 now. Science leads the way. We're in second, 2.2 seconds back. Gasly in third ahead of Ricardo, but I think Gasly's got an issue, we've been told, on team radio. So Ricardo flies by him and he's up into P3. He's only 4.2 seconds back, so he's, he's done okay. I, I would have liked to have seen Ricardo a little bit quicker, maybe using more of those mediums, but he's not doing a bad job. I think he'll still get some solid points in today's race, but we are definitely aiming for more than that. I reckon we could get a, definitely a top five. Definitely a top five. Because as the first pit stops happened, we were up into P6, I think it was, with the overtake on Leclerc, and we'll have the soft tyres on that last stint, so we should be pretty damn rapid. But right now, lap 20, we've got company. Sainz's pit, we're the ones leading the race, but Lando Norris is going for an overtake on his teammate. It's the Red Bull side by side, and Norris overtakes Verstappen. He's been the lead Red Bull the entire race, Verstappen has, but now, crucially, in the last third of this Grand Prix, Norris is setting himself up to become the race leader, because we are going to pit on this lap. Ricardo's just come in. We're staying out for one more, just to save the double stack, but we're struggling on these hards now with over Steer, and Norris makes an incredible overtake on the outside of us into that chicane down the hill. Um, I mean, the tyres are so, so bad now, so I'm not surprised he got us just on traction alone off that uh, second corner, and it's absolutely time to come in. So a little bit of pain for one extra lap. I really wanted to come in on lap 20, but I saw Ricardo was primed to come in, so I didn't want to ruin his race um, with the double stack. So we went longer. We're playing the good team game now we're in and we can definitely take softs to the end of the race and Ricardo to my surprise also is on softs I really thought he was gonna go to hard tires but it's game on then both myself and Ricardo going for the same aggressive strategy and we're also just basing this off the data of the AI you know all of them at the start on heavier fuel went to 16 laps on the softs so we can definitely get to the end with a good amount of tyre wear to charge on. It's not going to be easy because we're down in P10. So there's a lot of overtakes to make. There's a lot of seconds to make up. But we know on this game, the delta time difference between tyre compounds is incredible. Um, so we just got to get our head down as Ricardo again makes a move on Piastri for the second time in this race. And again, can we follow him through and take some inspiration as he sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix? And that was whilst being held up by Piastri in the final corners as we look to maybe try and set up a move on the outside. We out-traction Piastri, but he blocks the switch back from left to right. We're still on the inside though. Bit more contact made, elbows out, Piastri really trying to stop us in our tracks, but it's no use because we're just so much quicker. We've already gained three seconds on him now onto lap 24 as we look to swap with Ricardo. He's done very well to show us these softs have the pace, and now it's our turn to maybe take the purple lap time off him and go quickest of all in this race. Purple first sector, green the second, DRS open and aided on this lap, onto lap 25, and it is the fast lap of the Grand Prix, and now we are on lap 27 and on the back of Alexander Albon, and we're going to make a big dive bomb on Alex to the inside. Confidence there that we can slow the car down with the tyre and we needed to do that just so I can get DRS on Leclerc and maybe set up set up a move on this same lap basically because I don't want to waste time because at the rate we're going you know Sainz and Russell just up the road so that's at least a P4 that's possible in this race and we'll see how much more is uh, possible after that in the clean air but right now faking to the left going to the right and overtaking Leclerc once more just before the final chicane and now we've got a bit of space to try and catch up to Sainz and Russell who are battling. This is perfect for us because the two are going wheel to wheel into turn one. Sainz on the inside, Russell on the outside. Really great battle between the Merc and the, uh, and the Ferrari once again, just like it was in the opening laps. Russell gets back around the outside of Sainz. What an overtake there. There's been some good passes at that corner actually by AI. Very unorthodox place to really make a move 
I, I feel, you know, real life, you don't see it too often, but the AI making it work really well on the game here. But Russell and Sainz have just lost themselves two seconds in like one and a half sectors there, because we're now all of a sudden within one second of Sainz, nearly a half a second within Sainz, as Liam Lawson is out of the Grand Prix, and that's called out a virtual safety car. I was kind of praying for a full one, maybe, because that would really have switched the tune of this entire race, but it's going to stay a VSC, and it's going to come to an end now, and we've actually gained a bit under the virtual safety car, because it ends perfectly as we can go into a corner, accelerate out, signs a bit wobbly on the rear end as his tyres may be going a little bit cold, maybe he's on the, he's on the hard tyres versus Russell's mediums, we bang tyres as we have to get the move done here I feel, because I want to overtake Russell on this lap, and then we've got five clear laps to try and bridge about 5.9 seconds to Alonso, it sounds like a lot, but we're on softs that are very durable. He's on mediums, and he's also in the dirty air of Verstappen. As we go for the dive on Russell, he tried to squeeze us to the inside of the hairpin. We kept our foot in. We wanted to be on the inside there to get the better exit. We weave about to try and break the toe, and now push away to try and maybe close up to Fernando Alonso. Russell trying his hardest to stay in the slipstream, but it's no use. We'll have the pace off the corners just to push away and focus on the car ahead of us, which is Alonso. And like I said, he's in the dirty air of Verstappen. He's trying his best to maybe break the deadlock of the 1-2 for Red Bull. So maybe there is half a chance we can catch them in the last couple of laps here. But yeah, there is Alonso. He's been keeping Verstappen honest the entire time in this last stint. And meanwhile, ahead of them... Lando Norris has been so, so calm. Ever since he made that great overtake on Verstappen and then myself as well for the race lead whilst we're still out before the first pit stop, Lando's just controlled this race really well and he's looking very strong to take this victory. And remember, myself and him are the closest two in the championship. So for us, being outside the top 10 to start this race, if Lando's going to win this race, we need to try and limit the damage as much as we can to our... Yeah, you know, our championship rival. I know it's a bit early to maybe start really talking about the championship. I don't like to ever talk about the championship this early, but if we're really, you know, honest with ourselves, at the moment, we are rivals in the standing, so it's time to limit the damage. And limit the damage we can, because lap 33 is here, and we're catching up to Fernando Alonso, but we've got our eyes on number 33, Verstappen, up the road as well, because we power past Alonso. He doesn't make it too difficult for us. He knows we have the overspeed, and maybe he's actually going to use us to follow us through to maybe make his own move on Verstappen in the dying laps of this race as we go on to the second last lap of the Grand Prix gaining every brake zone on the Red Bull. This soft tyre, I mean, there's a reason why the AI went 60 laps on them. It's really, really decent. And in hindsight, maybe we could have even done medium to softs like Ricardo did in this race and gone even better. But, you know, you can say a lot in hindsight, we went with what our engineers thought was best with the hard tyre. But look at the way we're able to just gain on Verstappen, not even having to really wreck the car too much on the kerbs and wrestle it through. We're just calmly going to go for that move. Verstappen almost moves to the inside just to admit defeat in a way. We have to give him a bit of room because he still is there on the inside but Verstappen almost kind of just licks his wounds and says goodbye because I look behind me and he's 2.3 seconds uh, behind because he kind of tightened up his own line there. So very unlike Max Verstappen, he just kind of kneels down and accepts the overtake as we're up into P2 to completely maximise that damage limitation versus Lando Norris's race win as on the last lap of the Grand Prix, Alonso is practically pushing Verstappen through the hairpin. Only two tenths between them. So close, yet so far. He's got one more chance to make an overtake. Alonso does. But this is the man of the hour here in Montreal. Lando Norris, great overtake on his own teammate earlier to take the lead and take the victory here in Montreal. It's the Canadian GP win. It's Lando's second win of the season. Two wins in the last three races, I think it is, isn't it? So Lando Lando in some fine form, and I think that'll be his lead in the championship. But for us, what a recovery. P14 to P2. Not bad, not bad. So as they climb out of the car, the Red Bull team are ready and waiting to celebrate a thoroughly deserved win. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? 
Well, they are very much at one with the car, which is a cliche, but it's true. It's not an easy process, and that work is very much paying off. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. It was a big question mark of how Lando would do here at Red Bull, obviously, versus Verstappen. Very, very quick driver in the game, but Lando is doing well. And at the moment, he's the, he's the leader at Red Bull. He's got the more points versus Verstappen. Ever since that first win for Max in the opening round, it's really just been a pretty torrid season for him. And even here, when he's on the podium, he's still coming second best to Lando Norris, who is loving life in his new Red Bull team here in season two for us p2 though it feels very very sweet from p14 that was a very very solid drive ricardo i'm disappointed i thought i really hoped he could have done more he was keeping up with us he was ahead of us for the first stint for a lot of it uh but it just he just didn't make the most of the soft tires in that second stint so he st uh, got stuck down in p9 but it is what it is sometimes they do get uh, kind of get stuck the ai unfortunately uh, even with a bit of a tire advantage but for us yeah we lose the lead to lando norris he takes the lead but it is really looking like our, myself and Lando, uh, the two Brits, pulling away as Science in third place is looking a bit distant. Red Bull, though, take the lead of constructors back away from us. 11 points ahead. We're going to need Ricardo to pull up his socks if Verstappen and Lando are back to maybe being consistent podium contenders. But that has been a very, very good Canadian GP for us, considering how Saturday went. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.